Welcome back to part two of our discussion of stress. So in this we're going to derive uh, the stress tensor from some basic considerations of forces and uh, aspects like that. Ignore the media site recording thing down here. I'm really sorry it's there, but um, recording on this tablet is really flaky and it uh, cuts off sometimes. And without uh, uh, having that up, I have no way of knowing if it's actually still recording or if I'm just talking to myself in a room. So let's start with the, the Cauchy stress theorem. Right? And it basically says... Um, We're going to define stress uh, there's no sense in really writing this out so the Cauchy stress theorem says that stress is defined by all the possible traction vectors associated with all the infinite planes that pass through a point right uh, by the traction vectors on all normal vectors, right? But if you know the traction vectors on three orthogonal planes, you can figure it out detraction on all other planes and it doesn't matter what three you pick just as long as they're orthogonal to each other so let's start with a uh, So just a notation, right? We'll say the traction on plane N, right? And that's equal to the norm, the normal vector dotted with our stress. In terms of indicial notation, right? We write it like this. This is not an R, that's an N. Okay, so let's start by defining a coordinate system. Right. Well, we'll define it by these basis vectors. Those are our x-axes, and we will uh, make a plane, some arbitrary plane that has a normal vector n, and it has a traction vector. acting on it. We're also going to define a, another vector, a distance, a scalar distance h. And this is the distance from the origin to the plane. Right, the shortest, the shortest distance. This plane has, uh, what else do we need? We need our area of the plane. And I think that's all we need for right now. All right. 
This is sometimes called the Cauchy tetrahedron. Um, okay, so let's think about force equilibrium on this. Uh, on this, oh yeah. So our we need a a mass, a density. And we'll use little a for our acceleration. Okay, so we want, we need the also want to define, so that's the one side of the tetrahedron. So we need to define the other three sides. Right. So we'll call this area A1. This area over here is A2. This area over here is A3. So now let's do force balance on our whole tetrahedron. So we've got the traction on the normal times the area. Right now we have the traction on this face, the traction on this face, and the traction on this face. The traction on uh, E1, DA1 minus the traction on E2, DA2 minus the traction All right, and that equals the uh, force equals m, all right? So that's going to be our density of our tetrahedron. All right? This is just our mass. All right? Okay. So now we can compute da1, da2, and da3 in terms of this face, a. All right? So we know that da1 all right, is our normal dot the projection of our normal onto the direction. It's just the first component of our normal vector times dA. <clears throat> right? We do the same thing. This is just geometry. So if you don't don't quite see that, work it out. And dA three equals n three dA. Right? And now we can plug that back in, and we will say. Uh, the traction on N minus T, the traction on E1, N1. So we're going to cancel out dA from both sides of the equation. I don't want to forget my hats. So each term had a dA in it, we canceled it, we canceled it out. Now what happens is we make this plane smaller. Right? So the tetrahedron, we want to shrink this tetrahedron to a point. Right? And so as this tetrahedron shrinks to a point, h gets smaller and smaller. So let's take this in the limit that h goes to zero, right? And the um, right-hand side of this goes to zero, right? That goes to zero. So we'll just erase this for right now. 
And then we're going to move all of this over to the other side. And we're left here. Right? So this is what this says is that the traction on any plane um, can be described by the tractions on three orthogonal planes. All right, so that's our derivation of uh, uh, Cauchy's stress theorem. So now we have to go from here to a uh, uh, definition of the of the stress tensor. All right. Okay, so let's go back to our our cube, right? And we have our different components on here. Um, and so we've got our, our, we've got a traction vector on E1, a traction vector on E2, and a traction vector on E3. All right, so let's just write these out. Right. The traction so the whoa, 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 whoa. I'm going to cause all kinds of confusion with that. There we are. E hat one. So we're still talking about the traction on every, every one of these is on the the uh, plane orthogonal to the x-axis. Right, we can write this out for the second e hat one. Two, three, three, traction, All right, so we can write this as the traction is an e hat i right in indicial notation. We can just write it. We can just write it like this. So notice there's nine components. Right with the uh, the normal vector or nine components. These are components of our normal vector. So let's just we're going to define these components. Right, the traction in the on the one on the e hat one plane in the one direction. Right, this is going to be our the terms of our uh, stress. So we can write this as sigma 1 1 e hat 1 plus sigma 1 2 e hat 2 plus sigma 1 3 e hat 3. So this is the force on the one plane in the one direction, the force on the one plane in the two direction, the force on the one plane in the three direction. 
or in general sense, okay, we'll call this B. <clears throat> okay, so now we'll keep this in mind, equation B. So we'll go back to where we left off with our Cauchy stress theorem, which was the traction on plane N was the traction on E hat 1 N1 plus the traction on E hat 2 N2 plus the traction on E hat 3 N3. All right. Okay. So we also know from our previous page that the traction on E hat I is sigma I J E hat J or sigma I1 E hat 1 sigma I2 E hat 2 I3 E hat 3 right so let's plug this in for all of these tractions here all right so the traction on n is sigma i1 e hat 1 plus sigma i2 e hat 2 plus sigma i3 e hat 3 N1 plus sigma oh, wait. I want to write this out completely 1 1 1 2 1 3 sigma 2 1 e hat 1 plus sigma 2 2 e hat 2 plus sigma I 2 3 e hat 3 and 3 plus sigma 3 1 e hat 1 plus sigma 3 2 e hat 2 plus sigma 3 3 e hat 3 2 and 3. <clears throat> okay so most of these terms Right, are actually zero. No, not for an arbitrary thing. I was thinking of a special case. Sorry. All right. So right. So in terms of in indicial notation. We can write it like this now. All right, so this defines our traction vectors. All right, and so We can always just write it this way. All right. All right, so that's just the derivation uh, of our stress tensor, right? It's not super important um, that you know, you're able to reproduce it, but just follow it through once. And uh, that's really all you need. Okay, thanks.